Got a lot of news to talk about today. New Japan makes its triumphant return as we speak, actually. A couple hours. But really, I, I don't know what the two and a half hours. The point of it is because, Dave, we have seen the greatest wrestling match of all time. It was a hell What'd of a match. What you think of it? It was the great. Match itself, it was a hell of a match, yeah. Yeah. Um, it wasn't the greatest match of all time, but that was pretty that was pretty much impossible. But it was a hell of a match. Um, you know, I mean, it. they had incredible advantages. Unfortunately, Edge tore his triceps in one of the retakes. Um, I don't know the spot uh, that he got hurt. One person speculated to me, but I don't think he knew that it w may have been the second or third time they did that RKO. You know, the spot where he comes off the top ropes into the RKO? Yeah. It might have been there, but uh, I don't know. The thing is, it's like it's um because people are going to go on like you know what did you rate it? And it's like you know I would rate. Well, actually, it super before you go to the rating, before you go to the rating, so they that would explain why because I was watching the whole match just waiting to see where he tore his triceps, and he did the whole match. They go all the way to the finish. His arm looked fine the entire time. So basically, you're saying they taped the entire match start to finish. Then they did a few multiple retakes. times, multiple, multiple. There was multiple stuff that was taped a second time. Um, sure, but but they taped the match from start to finish. He finished the match with no torn triceps. Then they right, went back. To right, the right, retakes. right, right. He got he got hurt. He I do know he got hurt in in the second taping, not the first. Taping. Okay, so so something happened after he had done the entire match, which is why yes. he made it through the entire match that we saw without what appeared to be a torn triceps. I believe so. I believe okay. so. I was told the injury was during the second taping when they went through other stuff. So this is like a combination of things. That's why it's kind of like you can't, for a number of reasons, you know, it's really not fair to rate it. Because like, just bring as an example, if uh, AJ Styles and Daniel Bryan, who I thought had, had a phenomenal match on SmackDown, and that was also taped weeks ago. So, um, you know, people go, well, that was taped weeks ago too what's the difference the difference is is that it was taped um and they could have added sound sweetening although they didn't but it's like you to me you can't compare a movie with a play pro wrestling is generally speaking like if you're going to say what's the best play you ever saw well it's a better one you can't say that the best boxing match ever was rocky balboa and Apollo Creed, even though it was probably more exciting than almost any boxing match in history. Of course, boxing's legitimate, and this isn't. But the point is, is that when you have, um, if you have two guys who are doing a boxing exhibition, a fake boxing match, let's say, and then you have two other guys who are, you know, doing retakes and replays and sound effects put in and everything like that, it's not. It's you can't compare them. Like I, it's like. If I said that Randy Orton and Edge was a better match than AJ and Daniel Bryan, it's completely unfair to AJ and Daniel Bryan because they essentially did it in one take, and these guys had, you know, multiple takes. I mean, there's a lot of people who, if they had multiple takes, you could, you know, lengthen it. You know, like you can do a 30-minute match, then you do another 30-minute match, you put it together, and it's a 45-minute match, which is not what happened here, but... but it is similar in some ways. Um, any spots that didn't look good, you did again. Um, you put in sound effects, which is funny because of what Randy Orton said the other day about thigh slapping, and then they threw in sound effects in this. You throw in fake crowd noise. I mean, like, you know, one point where this thunderous, this is awesome, this is awesome chance, and I'm looking at the people, and no one's lips are moving. You know what I mean? And it's kind of like, okay, you know, it's like I can't. It's not. It's just not fair to people who do pro wrestling matches. But I mean, in the finished product, it was fantastic. And you know, even I'm certain, you know, one take not edited, it was probably one hell of a match. But you know, I mean, there were things edited in, and he's, you know, I mean, torn tricep is, it's, which is interesting because I was asked earlier today, and I don't know. Of course, obviously, obviously, I don't know the answer. But I mean, what would his mentality be? You come back your first. I guess essentially you're it's not what it's like you're I guess you would call it your third match back you tear your tricep after being out for nine years is that a message or you know how do you take that I mean I presume he's going to come back from it maybe the message is don't do a bunch of retakes of dangerous spots in your match or spots it for whatever reason but you had to do a retake do, they didn't do anything dangerous though I mean compared to most guys 
It well, wasn't. Dave, if you tear your triceps doing something, then well, there you was your obviously a level of danger to that. Yeah, but what uh, you know, coming off the top ropes into an RKO. I mean, it's like that wouldn't be high on the list of things to avoid. I mean, it's just shit happens when you're. You know, I mean, that's that's pro wrestling. I mean, even safe pro wrestling. I mean, you know, you know better than anyone that most of the times when guys get hurt, it's it's not doing dangerous stuff. It's doing it's doing routine stuff that just something happens. And that's what, you know, essentially happened here. But it's also not always. I mean, the thing is, with torn triceps is a unique injury. Um, and it it's, you know, there's there's so it's like. It's one of those things that you get because of what you're doing. I mean, not what you're doing in the match, so to speak, but is what you're doing in other ways, um, whether it comes to training or whatever it is. Um, you know, not whatever. Um, and I don't know, you know, it could be a fluke thing, but, um, you know, do you, you know, at, at 46, 47, do you come back from that? Like, like I, I think he probably will, you know. But I'm not, I'm not in his head, so I don't know. But you know, you come back so quick, and then you get that that level of an injury. You know, it's something, something to think about. Um, you know, because when one of the problems, well, with, it one, is, one, but one, I of, mean, one of the problems with getting older and continuing to wrestle is that either you you um, completely tone down your wrestling, or you're going to get hurt. Even even with a very limited schedule which he's going to have anyway i mean you know obviously he's coming back for whatever it was um i mean i know the report was five matches a year and i was told that it's it's more than five um but it, this year probably be less than five given given he's probably gonna be out for months well i was watching the uh fourth episode of undertaker's documentary and it wasn't in this one but i think it was it was one of the previous ones he was talking about how it's hard to do one match a year. Everyone thinks it's easier to do one match a year, but it's actually harder because different. you're having to do things completely differently than being out there every night and doing your match. And, and I mean, when you think about Edge in this match here, I mean, how often for the rest of his life is he going to go out there and work 44 minutes and then go back in and, you know, probably cold... Uh, do another spot, repeat this spot, repeat this spot, take the RKO off the rope three times or whatever, you know, redo this spot, redo that spot. I mean, never. It's probably, he's probably never going to do that again in his in his career. And, I mean, maybe that had something to do with the torn triceps. Maybe it didn't. I don't know. But, I mean, that is a lot of wear and tear on your body to do that all day long. True. But most of the time, torn triceps isn't so much what you do in the match as much as what you do not in the match i mean it's like it's not an injury like um you know like a broken nose where somebody hits you in the nose and you break your nose torn tricep is usually something to do with um training you know and things like that or you know it can be you know obviously it's it's more heavily pre you're more heavily predisposed to tear your tricep if you're doing a lot of steroids, which I'm not saying he is, and I'm not saying that he isn't, but it is, you know, torn triceps, torn abs, and torn torn thighs um, are, you know, generally in sports, torn pecs are generally considered steroid injuries in sports, um, whereas torn biceps and torn hamstrings, torn hamstrings are from running too fast um, without warming up. Torn biceps are from, can be from a lot of things. I mean, you can... You know, if you take a lot of steroids, you are more predisposed to torn biceps. But I've seen a lot of people tear their biceps that that didn't do steroids. Whereas, I mean, I mean, I don't want to say I I don't know. I've ever heard of anyone who tears their quad that isn't doing steroids. I mean, I suppose it's possible. But I remember when um, you know NFL coaches, one of the NFL coaches would talk to me and just said that like when steroids came in. There were all these new injuries that nobody, you know, you know, those were the ones I mentioned. So, like, nobody in the NFL ever got these injuries. Then steroids came into the game, and then we started getting these injuries that this is a guy who dates back to the 60s. You know, before, I think steroids actually started in the NFL around 62, but they probably didn't get plentiful until the 70s. But um, late 60s, I'd say late 60s is probably fair. But, you know, he said how, like, you know, before, no, you know, they played the same football game, 
and probably played a more dangerous version because as the game progresses, um, you know, rules make it safer and safer. But, you know, the steroids, um, which led to bigger people running at a higher speed with larger collisions, um, created, you know, those injuries, but also created the muscle tears, um, you know, that they weren't getting, you know, the, the type of muscle tears that they weren't getting before. So, you know, I mean, you could, you know, whatever. It's it's so, I mean, as far as, you know, you could say it's a fluke, but the other problem with, with um, the triceps, and we saw that with Batista, uh, who did come back from it, but when you do it once, people who tear their triceps um, are way more predisposed to tearing it a second time. From, from something much easier because, um, you know, so that's another, you know, it's another thing to to think about from his standpoint. He's making so much money. I got to think he'll come back. I mean, if it was like a neck injury, you know, I would say that might be a sign from God. You know, your first match back, you hurt your neck again. He didn't, thank God he didn't do that. But tricep injury, you know, he's still going to be out for a while, unfortunately. But, uh, yeah. Well, overall, I thought the match was great. I thought that even was taking awesome. out the crowd noise and any editing that they did, I thought that Randy Orton worked his ass off, Edge worked his ass off, the selling was great, the story was great. I just thought it was awesome. I agree. I thought the match was. I thought the match was great. I wish they didn't put in the fake crowd noise. I thought that that was more of a negative than a positive because it was so fake and obvious. Um, but again. They were in there trying to, you know, they set a real high standard, greatest match of all time. So they were going to over edit it and they were going to overproduce it and and all that. So it was just, um, yeah, that was just what they were going to do. Um, I think it would have been, like I said, I think it would have been better, you know, again, but, but you don't really... You know, even even those fans that were there, you know, which are the performance center guys, you know, they're doing, let's go Edge, let's go Randy, let's go. And it's like, I wish that they would, um, you know, since since they're told how to cheer anyway, why don't you tell them to, like, boo the heel and cheer the baby face? Because that's what this match was about. Um, you know, instead of doing, I mean, that cheering is cool for a moves match. You know, or a face versus face match or something, and it was okay here. But considering you're controlling the crowd, why don't you have them, you know, uh, enhance what the guys were doing as opposed to, you know, chant like ringsiders will chant in a match. I mean, I guess this is probably the kind of cheering that they grew up on because they're all young and and probably never saw. The other style of chanting, which is better, you know, but, um, but even in the post editing, I mean, they, you know, they had like, they were, that's what they were piping in, you know, they were piping in, uh, fight forever, fight forever, you know what I mean? And it's kind of like, God, you know, fake fight forever chance, fake, this is awesome chance, you know, I don't know. It, it, it hurt it for me. Uh, yeah, Randy Orton was phenomenal in the match. Um, and, and so was Edge. Yeah, it was, they definitely, um, you know, I mean, it was it was super match. But like I said, if if uh, Daniel Bryan and AJ Styles had the same uh, thing, I think that their match would be significantly better than it, than it was. And that match was fantastic, um, and probably would be better than this match if you gave them the same chance to, you know, um, do the same thing and then do it again and then clean up any problems and go longer by editing stuff in. you know i mean there's just ways to do it um in this t in the environment that they had which literally no other wrestler other than undertaker and, and aj um and pretty much as far as like attempting to do a match and that's not really a match that was more of a movie scene um has had um i wouldn't say ever but that i can recall it's not like you know, any of these other people that we talk about that have great matches are, are, are put in a position. I guess Stadium Stampede, I should say, that's that's which is a fair comparison. Stadium Stampede was certainly exactly the same thing, um, you know, and, and more, you know, that was. But even then, that was like still, 
even Stadium Stampede was like they finished at five in the morning, and then we saw it. Um, what like uh, uh, fourteen hours later, not um, a week later, um, and they didn't, you know, and they didn't get, they didn't pump in fake crowd noise, and they, um, I mean, they certainly edited heavily, and they certainly could have done retakes, and and probably did, uh, but um, yeah, so. Um, but it was, uh, you know, I mean, it, it's 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 one of those things where because they will probably always promote it as this, that it will, you know, likely go down as an all time classic match. And in some ways it was. I just wish that it was it was a more fair comparison to like, say, AJ and Daniel Bryan, which who I thought I really thought had a better match um, or would have had a better match under the same circumstances. You give them. 20 extra minutes yeah, yeah without a doubt you can kick out of everybody in the circuits finisher um i think that they would have because because i thought their match was just about as good in a one take as these guys had you know with a lot more opportunity and certainly a lot more leeway on what they were allowed to do i thought the daniel Bryan aj match was awesome but i thought that this match was better and really, one of the things also was just because well, it was on SmackDown, bad. they it's, went through, they had four course, commercial breaks, which means we missed, we missed like 12 to 15 minutes of that match because of commercials. And we probably didn't because it was taped ahead of time. We probably, those breaks were probably only 30 seconds each that we, that went four minutes on TV. But, um, if, of course it's better because it had the opportunity better, but given the same. No, I actually thought the work in the ring by Edge and Randy Orton was better. But you don't. How do you know? You're watching like over. You're watching stuff that was done over and over again. It's not the same thing. You can't even compare it. It's not a fair. It's not a fair comparison to any one take match that you've ever seen. It was great, and you can say it was great. But if you want to compare it to another match, it's not. It's not fair unless the people have the same situation where they can go in there and go. You know, let's do this all over again, and let's do this all over again. You know. Nobody else gets that opportunity. That's my point. They don't it's get like the a, opportunity, but I can I can see everyone's selling. I can see everyone's execution. I can see the story of the match. Obviously, they did some retakes, but that match was largely 44 minutes. And they fixed some things, well, I'm sure, no, here and what? there. But it, it the was, idea, was, the was, idea it, that no, they were going was, for 12 straight hours to put that match together, and like was, everything it, was shot five times, it was it Okay, it, it was actually, from what I understand, it was a combination. So it wasn't necessarily, you know, it wasn't 45 minutes straight. It was different times. It's not like they went 45 minutes like, like say, um, what's a 45-minute match? Well, Kenny Omega and um, Tanahashi did a 40-minute match at the Tokyo Dome. I mean, that was a 40-minute match. This was something different. I'm not saying one's better than the because well, you can't compare one to the other. You can't compare you can't compare a movie scene with a play. You know, I mean, a movie is going to be better than a play because you're working on it more. So yeah, it's better, but that doesn't mean that the people in the play didn't actually do a better job by doing it in one take. I mean, because it's a, it's a different animal. So that's my point. Is like you you can't say. Oh, this, 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 and this. It's it, so it wasn't a one take, so it's not the same thing. I think that you're you're greatly overstating the amount of extra work that was put into that match. I'm not in the sense of if you're making a movie to do a 45 minute scene, this is days. And yes, I, and this I was not, not days. This, this, this was not sitting days. there at the performance center for days. Putting no, this was no, 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 no. This was not days, but it's not. The, it's still not the same thing. It's it's if you allow guys to you know to with all these benefits and everything like that, it's still a different animal from a pro wrestling match. I mean, you know, Stadium Stampede is is a, is a, is a comparison, but even then, like I said, they didn't have the post editing time to do the same thing and i would never compare stadium stampede to a pro wrestling match it's ridiculous to compare it i mean it was 
it was a phenomenal entertainment thing, as was this. They're both phenomenal entertainment things, and they are a, I guess you could say they are a form of a pro wrestling match, but to compare them to a one-take pro wrestling match is not fair to the people who do one-take pro wrestling matches, because it's not the same thing. I mean, if if you, you know, I mean, it, it's it's just, you know, you're adding... This, this to me, honestly, sounds like the old school argument that if you choreograph your match from start to finish, no, it's, it's not. not the same as look, look, going in there and calling it from start no, to finish. No, it's not. It's completely different. No, I don't care if you choreograph your match from start to finish if you do an entertaining match. And I don't care about this in the sense that, yes, the finished product was a super match, but you cannot compare an edited match. Like, okay. The comparison, and, and okay, again, but even even Lucha Underground, and I would always say, like, I cannot rate Lucha Underground because the matches were, um, the way the matches are done, you know, you do long matches, you edit it out, you edit out the bad stuff and everything like that. But even Lucha Underground did not do retakes. Lucha Underground, well, I, I guess they did a little bit, but they really didn't. Um, I mean, not, not at this level. Lucha Underground would do matches, and then, you know, weeks later, actually months later, they would put them on TV, and they would edit out all the botches, and, um, but they didn't retake, like, okay, like, they didn't, like, stop and go, okay, this, we're going to do this scene six times in a row, like you would do in a movie, or you would do in a, or even in a television show, for that matter. Um, it's still not the, it's it's not even the same thing as Lucha Underground. So I I feel we can we can disagree well, on this, but I feel if you edit out botch spots, that is no different from retaping a botch spot. Yeah, I know, but it's, it's not this. Like I said, it's not the same thing. It's not the same thing as a one take match. Either way, Lucha Underground's not the same, and this isn't the same. But even Lucha Underground did not combine things like this they it was lucha underground let me let me finish lucha underground would do a match and then they would edit out things that didn't go well and try to put it together now lucha underground did not do this type of a match because lucha underground was all about high spots and all about you know um things like that so it was a different style but this was something else this was um you know this was you know where they did multiple takes and things like that which lucha underground didn't do and they did multiple different editing tricks and things like that which lucha underground did do um but it's a, the closest comparison would be a mix of uh lucha underground and um stadium stampede as opposed to what we normally see and what we would compare with something else the finished product was fantastic it just you know again but i i, I it, it you know how do you compare it with a regular match you can't like i i never would say about what i would say about lucha underground it's like i can't go give four stars to a match where they're editing so much out and you'll never see a botched spot because even though sometimes they didn't get every botch spot out but you normally won't when you're doing all kinds of high risk stuff and it looks so great because you know, it's not, you know, it's not like watching Friday night at Arena Mexico where, you know, it's like, this is what you get. You know what I mean? Then this is what traditional pro wrestling is. And it's like, if you want to do that, it's fine. I'm not saying that they're cheating. I'm just saying it's not the same thing because it's not. It's not the same thing.